Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and I am going to tell you a wonderful story that will lull you into a peaceful and restful sleep. Tonight, I will guide you on a fantasy adventure to a wonderful and tranquil lake. Here, the waters appear as still as glass on most days, and on others, the ripples carry with them magic from lands that seem frozen in time. Before we go on the journey to stillness and rest, let's enjoy the moment before arriving there. This moment that we have now, this quiet, this calm. Rest your head on your pillow. Let your hands fall to their sides. Let go of any tension in your neck or arms and simply let any other thoughts slip away. We begin by breathing deeply, inhaling and exhaling. As you inhale, feel the cool breath enter your nostrils, then hold it for three seconds. As you exhale, the warmth is released, the air filters out of your body, and with it, you release any stress any worries and cares of the day. One more deep breath in and out. And we feel our body becoming heavy, the wind on the lake picking up a little now, cooling our face and traveling over the water, whistling through the low hanging willows around the lake. In the distance, we see swans gliding ever so gracefully, as if in dance. They are like a mirage in the twilight. Noiselessly they glide, one follows the other. As the swans move across the water, they create tiny currents, drifting ripples that spread out, their lines reaching us on the shore. Our gaze follows the swans a little, and as we look up to where they are sailing, we notice how the light changes, reflecting their long, slender necks in the water. Tonight, I am going to tell you the story of Swan Lake. As you keep your eyes closed, simply listen and enjoy the sounds of the water, the rustle of wind, and the words that I will gently speak. Our story begins at the grand royal court, where a magnificent ball is about to take place. Servants are busy preparing the halls, setting out bedecked tables, clearing space for the guests to arrive. The guest of honor is, of course, the prince himself, Prince Siegfried, who is about to turn 21. He is tall, dark-haired, and handsome. To celebrate, there will be music, dancing, and decor such as has never been seen before in the land. Yes, the prince is heir to the kingdom, and his mother has high hopes for this special birthday. Perhaps here, he will choose a wife of his own, a girl fit to rule their beautiful kingdom. Perhaps here, during the ball, her son, her beloved son, will begin the journey to... Yes, mother the journey to love. I want to marry for love, he says, when the queen approaches him. No, my dear, the journey to goodwill, I was about to say, for I did not marry your father out of love. It was the will of our parents that two kingdoms be united, and so we sat on the throne together as we planned for many years before our wedding day. As she speaks, she presents her son with a gift. It is covered in a silken cloth, and when she lifts the cloth up, it reveals a beautiful crossbow. Exactly, says another voice. It is her mother's counselor and his mentor, von Rothbart. He seems to always be interrupting their conversations. The prince looks a bit disdainfully at his mother, and then at von Rothbart. He is unhappy, that they must have this conversation yet again. He takes the crossbow from her hands and leaves without saying a word. 
Heaving himself up on his horse, Siegfried gallops away, crossbow in hand. He heads towards the forest, his mind a mix of thoughts and anxieties. Must he always be concerned with what others feel is best for him? Must he always obey? Must he always do his parents' bidding and comply with their wishes? At 21 years old, perhaps he can find a way out of this madness. In the middle of the forest, there is a glistening lake, and it is here that the prince often comes to think or to read. It is getting late, the evening light is fading, and he knows the forest will soon be very dark. But he doesn't care. It feels better to be out here on his own, in silence and solitude. This time, as he approaches the water, he sees a bevy of swans flying over their own reflection. He decides now is the time to try this new crossbow from his mother. Carefully, he takes an arrow, fits it to the bow, and aims precisely at one of the swans. However, before it can pierce her chest, the swan spreads her wings, spins as magic dust falls over her in the evening glow, and suddenly, right before his eyes, the swan magically morphs into a beautiful woman. The prince watches, mesmerized, enraptured. Is this truly the enchanted forest he often read about in fairy tale books as a child? Or is he simply dreaming? Perhaps he has been thinking too much, and now his mind is playing tricks on him. There are too many thoughts, too many questions. Siegfried approaches the woman and cautiously holds out his hand for her to take. He does not know how such a creature greets another, but his curiosity has now gotten the best of him. Now, the moon is high above the lake, its glow casting a spotlight on silver waters. The woman, just as surprised to see the prince, gives a smile, and then her hand. As their eyes meet, their fingers touch, and their hearts melt in one swift moment. They walk along the lake shore, hand in hand. At first, there is only silence between them, as if speaking would break some sort of spell. Finally, after a few long minutes, it is the prince who attempts conversation. Tell me your name, he says. I am called Odette, the woman replies. As they talk, he prods her to tell him what is this scene which he has just witnessed. At first, she seems reluctant, but with time, she finds she likes his company. He finds out that she is a cursed princess. She and the bevy of swans, who are in fact her ladies-in-waiting, have been under the spell of von Rothbart. The prince realizes what he suspected all along. The man is, in fact, an evil sorcerer. During the day, Odette and her friends all become swans, and, under moonlight, they reveal their true selves. Under the cloak of darkness, Nobody knows this secret that the forest and the lake keep hidden. And, of course, only true love can break the curse. Now, you may suppose that true love had already found its way to the lake, and that, with a simple kiss, the prince can break this dark enchantment. But it is not to be. Not yet. In that moment, the evil Rothbard appears, his fiery eyes enraged. He places his strong arms on Odette's shoulders and tears her away from the prince. Dance away, he orders. The women, cowering in fear, all move away and run to the other side of the banks. Siegfried decides to not pursue Odette for now. He heads back to the castle where the royal ball is in full swing. Here, he finds many pretty maidens to dance with and obliges a few for his mother's sake. But nothing will take his mind off Odette. The music plays, his body dances in time to the waltz. 
but he only longs to dance with Odette. Unbeknownst to him, the evil sorcerer Rothbart, meanwhile, has cast a spell on his own daughter, Odile, to make her look exactly like the woman the prince now loves. The doors of the great hall burst open, and everyone turns to see the most beautiful woman standing at the entrance. The prince turns towards Odile, thinking it is Odette. Now he cannot look away. Can it be that his dreams will indeed come true on this night? He approaches her cautiously, lest the sorcerer reappears to steal her away. The prince invites the woman he assumes is Odette to the dance floor, and she follows. They dance, at first very formally, and then more intimately. The young woman smiles, a bewitching smile, and the prince is convinced he has found his beautiful bride. He will announce it tonight, he decides, for what would make mother happier? The music is playing, the other dancers are swaying, and the prince's mood has changed from melancholic to full of joy. At the end of the song, the prince takes the woman to the stage and announces for all to hear that he is sorry. He apologizes for leaving them earlier in the evening, but it was something his heart had called him to do. He quickly explains that he has gone on a magical journey and returned. And now she is here with us, he concludes, my intended bride. Everyone applauds the decision of the prince to take a wife. His mother is all smiles, and in the corner, the sorcerer is gleaming. The prince turns to the woman at his side. I pledge to marry you and make you my queen, he promises. We will have a grand celebration. In a few days' time, you will stand here by my side and rule the kingdom with me. There is a bit of commotion and shuffling on the dance floor. The prince looks to the audience to see that there, before him, yet at a further distance, stands another woman. He is confused. The woman below, pushing her way through the crowd, looks exactly the same as the one who he now holds in his arms. Which one is his true love? There must be an explanation. Naturally, a voice calls as the evil sorcerer steps forward. Naturally, you want to marry for love. But, my lad, I have been planning this moment for years. The moment when an enchanting spell would call you away from your duties and entice you to follow your heart into the forest. There, I planned, you would see the woman who would steal your heart away. But you see, only I hold the key to the spell. Now that you have promised your love, and you are thrown to another, you must keep your promise. It cannot be, says the prince, turning to look into the eyes of the woman that stands beside him. But as he inspects her gaze, he sees that she has turned cold, and in that moment of recognition, she morphs into her true self, Odile, not Odette. The prince cries out in horror as he realizes his mistake. He has pledged his love to another woman, blindly. The prince dashes off the stage, leaving Odile standing alone. He climbs down to reach out to Odette, who now looks at him with glistening tears streaming down her face. The prince has indeed made a mistake, too late, and with too little time left to resolve anything. The clock chimes midnight, and he knows that Odette will only appear as a beautiful woman for about four more hours. After that hour, the sun will begin to climb over those distant hills. The light in the forest will grow brighter. Dawn will break. The spell, which keeps his lover bound, will remain unbroken. He should have proclaimed his love to her on the lake. He should not have let the evil force come between them. He should not have waited an hour too long or one more night. And yet he did. In doing so, the prince had made the biggest mistake of his life. He had promised his love and devotion to another, 
The court heard everything he said. It is indeed too late. Odette realizes this and runs away. She runs, runs, and does not stop until she comes to the lake. It is so still now, so enchanting. As a child, she wanted to stay here forever, but now she is cursed under the moonlight and the water only feels like an appropriate grave. Back in the castle, the prince has seen the real Odette running away. He drops the hand of Odile and again summons his horse so that he can go and find her. Leaving the party without an explanation, Prince Siegfried hurries as fast as he can on horseback. He must find her before it is really too late. At the lake, the prince finally arrives to see Odette being consoled by her friends. They are too enchanted and under this spell. They comfort her and dry her tears. They do not see the prince approaching. Please, he calls out, let me try to explain. I did not intend to marry another, and in fact, I have not yet done so. The same sorcerer who cast this evil spell on you has also tricked me and made me fall for an imposter. Please, Odette, do not hold this mistake against me. I love you. Odette turns to the prince upon hearing these honest words. As she looks his way, she notices two giant black birds swooping down from the thick forest behind him. Look out, Siegfried, she cries. The prince turns to see the creatures, suddenly knowing in an instant that these two are Rothbart and his daughter under the guise of Nightfowl. They have giant wings and things that appear on their faces like beaks. A promise is a promise, dear prince, says Rothbart, coming closer to his face. You have tricked me, the prince says, his defense is up, and his strength to fight the evil Rothbart renewed. I would rather die together with Odette than marry an imposter, he calls out. Rothbart and his daughter rush forward, attempting to lunge at the prince and hurt him. However, their plan to do him harm is foiled. The prince is strong and ready to defend his true love. He swoops over to Odette, whose feathers and wings are now forming, her face morphing into a bird's, and a beak also appearing where once her luscious lips almost kissed him. As he sees the change taking place with the strength of the sun emerging, the prince knows what he must do. He bends down to swoop up the swan, dives into the lake, and swims into the water with her. Rothbart and his daughter look on with horror as the prince and Odette disappear into the water. The ripples from their dive grow into waves. The water, now a sea of glistening diamonds, surrounds them like a wall, blocking the view of Rothbart and Odile. Now, covering the lake are dozens of swans. They are no more silent, but squawking and barking, the way swans do when they are defending their kind from danger. You see, the prince had decided that he would much rather die than marry the person he would not truly give his heart to. Hand in hand, the two lovers disappear under the waters. For a few moments, the sorcerer and his daughter watch in dismay as the bevy of swans and the prince fade from their sight. But then, somewhere beyond the mist, they behold two figures forming, rising back up out of the waters. The swans are no more. In their place are dozens of girls, friends of Odette. Leading the way is Odette herself. Her hand still clasps the prince's. Together, they rise to the surface, floating serenely. The water is lifting them up. And, as they take their breaths of air, they turn to each other knowingly. The spell has been broken. They had decided to go together to the depths of the lake, and yet, all was not lost. The prince had proven that his love for Odette went even to the point of sacrificing his own life. 
Rothbart and Odile watch as the two figures, still afloat, now ascend. They rise higher, higher, higher. Two spirit beings in love, united, and they will stay united in the heavens, their next destination. The spirits of two lovers lift up into the clouds, as do the spirits of all the other girls, the swans who followed them on the lake. Elegantly, gracefully, they all keep rising until finally, like the swans, they too fly away. This classic story has been told over and over again, in storybooks and on the ballet stage. Swan Lake is a story of beauty and impossible love. Those who look upon the prima ballerina playing Odette see her grace and angelic movements. And if they look deeper, they also see her pain she is confident with each stride, each step of the dance, but sometimes she dances alone, in isolation, for it is on the lake, in seeming isolation, that she has found a way to cope with the sadness. She cannot break the spell on her own. She must wait for her lover to come and discover her hiding place, to see her both in the light and in the darkness. In the end, evil cannot win over good. Darkness cannot penetrate the light. Although all seems lost, it is far from hopeless. And, even in death, the spirits of the two lovers rise to new heights, together, hand in hand, hearts combined. The music plays another long and soulful rift. We see the light of dawn breaking, and we know that another day will find the lovers awakened from their dream and stepping into a new, better, and brighter reality. I hope you enjoyed this sleep story and that it gives you courage tonight. Remember, whatever you are going through tonight, your heart is strong enough to carry it. Thank you for joining me on Soothing Pod. I will be with you again next time when you have to stop, listen, and relax with a simple story. Good night, sweet dreams, and until next time.